and I said, I sat in your kitchen for one hour and tried to talk sense to you about this ridiculous ordinance, and you ignored me. But I have your attention now. I had pictures of what had happened. The disparity with which we have been treated and people who are in the clique are given exceptions. It's not about any of you, but there's a long history of people with certain privileges accepting being treated in an exceptional manner, and I put a protest in because the ordinance has virtually no credibility because of the way it's been handled by the people in power. I'll sit down now. <laughs> That happens, so Well, you know what? When you write this, you need to realize that people have private property rights. Our problem is not with us, the homeowners. Go look at the real estate agents and the people who build spec houses. Okay, who's next? Um. I'll just follow up on what she said. I've had similar bad experience. Name uh, My name is John Cheadle. Uh, the mayor built my house. <coughs> the city manager made sure it never got inspected. It cost us thousands upon thousands of dollars to connect the electricity, which wasn't connected, even though the house got a seal in, to make to put pilings under the the house where he had the pilings three feet off the ground, didn't even touch the ground, on and on and on. Then I wanted to cut some trees. I knew the city manager uh, wouldn't approve my uh, request because I'm not in the end crowd. And I went ahead and cut the trees anyway, and I'll do it again when, uh, next time. Uh, Y'all wouldn't be on this committee if you weren't on the inside, like she's talking about. That's why you're on this committee. Why is this committee meeting? Everybody is opposed to this. Not everybody. That is not true. That's not true. Majority. Let's, 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 let's take a vote. Let's take a vote in yes. this, this not, street. So there's 2,000 property owners here. Let's so take a vote. Let's take has a there vote. been a survey that says that? Let's, yes. Yeah. There has been a survey. No, there has been a survey. Yeah, well, you, you, you're not a, you know what, buddy? You're not an expert. Order. Order. You don't know the first thing about polling. Hey, hey, wait a minute, guys. Wait a minute, guys. Let's play nice today, okay? Oh, yeah. Let's play nice. Or I'm going to call your mothers. <laughs> well, it's hard so to play nice when you're screwed over all the time. In this well, point. I'm sorry, but it won't happen. Not these people we are not going to try to screw you over again, John. So relax. Right. Don't point that. I point that. I'm, I will call <coughs> you. <coughs> but anyway, uh, you know what you're getting ready to get into. The minute this becomes law, you're going to have a class action suit, and the city's going to spend more and more money because you can't get into taking people's property. And that's what this does. This is a taking issue. What lawyer have you had to look at this? The city council? Yeah, I figured that. I figured that. You better get a good lawyer who knows what they're doing and have them look at this, because this is a taking. And once you do that, then you're going to have a class action suit and the city will spend a fortune. <coughs> also, <clears throat> in your section 16, is that intended to be two separate actions? Are you intending to have the uh, city council vote without the mayor having a vote and then have the mayor have the approval as an executive? In this city, I've never seen anything like it. The mayor votes as a member of the council. The mayor is the executive branch. I'm sure you took civics. The council is the legislative branch. Yet the mayor sits there and votes on all these council meetings. 
Now, when the lawsuit is filed, everything the mayor voted on is going to be void. The mayor is a part of the legislative body. The mayor is not. A part if you of the look at the charter, he is a part of it. Can, can we confine this to the tree ordinance, please? Yeah. Well, this is part of the tree ordinance. You, the well, you've got it. We are not way. here to figure out whether the city's charter should yeah. have a mayor voting or not. We're here to adopt. Well, you better look at what you drafted. I know what we drafted. Can you tell me who you are? I'm sorry. I Dan McAfee. Who? Dan McAfee. And what is your relationship to the council? Are you a council? None of us are on the council. Are you chair of the PNC? I'm the vice chair of the PNC. Where's Will? He's on jury duty. Okay, thank you. I didn't know who you were. I'm sorry to interrupt you, John. That's right. All right, if you would look at that, because what's the way you've drafted it is the right way. It says effective on the adoption of the city council and approval by the mayor. Is that your intent? Yes. So there's two, the mayor doesn't vote with the city council. At this point, again, I'm not going to get in and, well, you got to sit here and litigate whether how's it it whether he What's votes with opinion? the council or votes separate from the council he still votes no it, it's very yeah. significant the way you got it drafted <coughs> the council votes and then the mayor approves or disapproves is that your intent if that's the way the council wants to work it sure Just pass it Dan would you coming. like for me to run the time with I, I, I doubt that we're going to get into okay. excessive time okay. often. Anyone else? I'll make it short. I'm John Watts. I have place up in Cedar Lane. I can't vote for the city council because my voting is down in Florida. But I don't like seeing 12 or however many pages you have on this. Yeah. It seems to me like you can make it really simple and say, you know, you could cut down trees for your view or something in that line without having to say it's got to be two inches or 12 inches or whatever it might be and you can only take so many down and you have to replace them. Uh, a while back I could have a bunch of trees cut down because they're part of in my view and part of it they, they're dead. And uh, the fellow came out and looked at it first and said no, no way and then he saw how many of them were already dead and after we cleared them out, guess what? I got a whole bunch of new trees coming up. So. I couldn't see what the big problem was cutting down some trees as long as I'm not stripping the area. Uh, and then we're getting down to now we've got little plants that you're trying to save. Well, I can understand trying to save some of them, but uh, there's one area that if I get trees growing in there and I don't get around to cutting them down, now you might not let me cut them down, and guess what? It's going to mess up my uh, uh, septic system. So I mean, just, it just seems like there's an awful lot of things that you're putting in here that we can simplify it and keep us. So we have a view that we want to have. That's why I bought the place when I first came up. I've got a picture out through there, and boy, I had a beautiful view. But now it's closing in. So I would like to be able to cut those trees down if they get in the way. You can't. Look, could you, could you all respond to some of these things? Because this gentleman, what he's explaining, is confusing to me. Because I thought that the way you're writing this would still give you an opportunity to maintain your view. And is that wrong? If I'm wrong, actually, please correct me. The new proposed ordinance makes it easier to maintain a view than the existing ordinance. The new ordinance also specifically outlines that your septic field, drain field, is part of the footprint of your house and you may clear that. Okay. It also gives you the opportunity to take down dead trees, no question. Right. So all of the quest, you know, all of your concerns are addressed in this ordinance. Right. Now, the other concern I have, of course, is any trees that are outside that footprint that are leaning toward the house. I did have some taken down before he had authorized that. Uh, I also have a concern with trees that are on the city <coughs> right away that are leaning toward my house right now. And this one tree is, it's dropped some huge branches in the past. Okay. And I'm just going to call the city and say, can you take that one down? <laughs> Yeah. Do you take down trees in the right away? Yeah. If they're hazardous. The trees, it's a bit fine. Mm -hmm. what, call it, what kind or like that. But anyhow, it's, it's got pavement on two sides of it. And then it's 
like this on the other side. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm concerned because this side over here, that's, that's going to be toward going. my house. So, okay. But anyhow, I just think the, the whole thing is an awful lot of pages. To, well, there's a lot of pages, but then there's things like, as we just discussed, you know, it, it defines what is a tree. So anything under eight inches isn't even covered by the ordinance. You can do whatever you want to with it. Can I do it Except with the shrubbery? Shrubber. I said, well, we were talking trees. But yeah, shrubbery, you know, it, it deals with sizes of shrubbery as well. Yeah. But, I, that term, I, do I have to get a permit, though? If, let's say it's under that eight inch thing. Do I still no. have to get a permit? No. That's not okay. shrubbery. Okay, not shrubbery. Okay. <laughs> Uh, in Trump, where you can't hear it, so it doesn't mean you're going to stand up and, and, and voice your concerns so we all can understand. My name is Don Rice. I, I live on the show. I am opposed to the ordinance as it is. I want to com compliment the committee. I've been coming to these for two years. You have made tremendous progress over the existing tree ordinance as it relates to trees. It's much easier to interpret. It provides for reasonable thinning. It provides for trimming which I never knew why I needed to get a permit to trim off a limb that had been trimmed off before. But it provides, but the shrubbery ordinance is unreasonable. I mean, basically, as I read the ordinance, and I'm not a lawyer, you cannot remove any shrubbery on your property. There are places that rhododendron and mountain laurel, and I'm a big supporter of them, they're beautiful until they get too dense, they fall over, they become ugly. None of the things you're saying, they don't become good wildlife habitat, they're marginal on preventing erosion when they're overgrown. I think the existing shrubbery ordinance that happens to be under new construction in the ordinance, which I've always had a problem with, but uh, <coughs> we need, I'm, I'm, in, I'm not in favor of clear cutting, but I'm in favor of reasonably reducing the vegetation on your property. The mitigation rules are, I've, I've dealt with tree mitigation in other places where at working with developers and working with nurseries who sell the stuff. I don't think the, I don't think your mitigation on shrubbery is even measurable. I don't see anything in there where you're measuring the size of the shrub and coming up with a, a comparable density. You do on the trees because you're measuring the caliper of the trees and coming up. You have made it more reasonable by getting away from the 15 gallon rule on trees but I don't see where you've gotten away from the 15-gallon rule on the, on the shrubbery, as I read it. I mean, if you look yeah, at your... We I'm, changed that. We changed that. I still don't think... I don't think you've come down... First it's of all, one for one, you, so you don't, don't measure. You have, I can't find where you have come up with a reasonable <laughs> measure on the shrubbery for even mitigating it. You're just saying if you take out one, you've got to replace it with a 15-gallon plant. And you might be taking out plant the small. Of course, I, I don't see any ordinance where you can take out any of them as it relates to shrubbery. And we do. I'm, I'm big on, I, just, I think, Scott, we say we're a fire-wise city, but then we prevent the removal of vegetation that is a fire hazard in this city. We're just, I, I say, you know, it's not if but when we will be under the Gatlinburg if we prevent the removal of reasonable vegetation, the thinning of vegetation, of, of the shrubbery vegetation. Replacement shrubs are no less than three gallons each. Right, but where did you measure to determine how many you need? Just one for one. One for one. And that's not true. Okay, one for one. So if I take out a tiny one, it would be a three gallon replacement. If you take out a huge one, it'd be a three gallon. It's just one for one. So what have you accomplished? If we need to thin for fire prevention, if we need to thin just to be able to walk around on our property, what have you accomplished by taking out one if you're replacing it? Well, if, if it falls under thinning, you don't have to replace it. You don't have to do any mitigation for thinning. Thinning is talking about trees. No, it, it says in, including specimen trees. Um, thinning talks about trees, Lenny. Maintenance pruning you can no, do for shrubbery. Pruning. I mean, I'm just reading shrubbery. Yeah. Um, you can trim it. You can. I think you've got. Uh, it's time for me to shut up. I think you've got an unenforceable ordinance as it relates to shrubbery. 
I think you've done a phenomenal job on trees. I would like to see it provide for reasonable views. I've got a beautiful view. People stop in my driveway all the time and look at my view. But it was created by an owner prior to me, either illegally or before they were the tree ordinance. But, you know, the, the, I think for people who need a view, there should be maybe, maybe not clear an entire hillside, but at least the width of their house to where they could remove a tree. Nothing that, prevents that. You want, nothing here prevents that. Yes, it does. How? If it, you're, you're thinning you can take out any tree out there. Do what? You can take out any tree out there. I can't take down, oh, uh, uh, what do you call them, a historic or a what is, what is they on? They're protected. Specimen, specimen, specimen tree, you can't take you down can. specimen tree. You have to mitigate, but you can take it down. But if you and Esther, again, backing up a moment to the shrubbery, uh, you know, you were talking about taking out a spindly little shrub and having to replace it with three gallon. Mm -hmm. The only shrubs that are even covered by this ordinance are anything five or more feet in height. Right. So the spindly little one that's not five feet in height isn't even covered by the ordinance. You can take it out anytime you want. But I can take you to lots adjoining me to where there are 30 foot rhododendrons that have fallen over and they're on the ground. And they're a fire hazard, they're, they're ugly, you know, they're, they're a public nuisance. I'm, I'm all in favor of these beautiful <coughs> rhododendrons that are trimmed and lush, and, but I can show you plenty in, in Sky Valley of mountain laurel and rhododendron that are collapsed, ugly, that are, in my opinion, a huge fire hazard. And they're certainly not wildlife habitat because nothing could get through them other than maybe a snake or a rat. Oh. Okay. Next. Can, can, can we ask questions as they, the, the question I have is what does the existing ordinance cover as far as the shrub is concerned? You can't clear more than a 10 by 10 area. Yeah. So, and see, I'm, and, and, and by the way, that happens to be, uh, and Linda and I argue over this point, but it's under new construction. If you take that ordinance to court, the only person restricted from removing shrubbery is a builder of a new house. I mean, you look at the ordinance, it says new construction, and it talks some about new construction, and then it talks about new. Now, I disagree with you on the 10 by 10 area. Um, you know, we've talked about that before. And adding the word small before the word tree, which is well defined as 8 inches, <clears throat> does not change what you can clear in a 10 by 10 area unless it's 8 inches or greater. And, and on the 10 by 10, I haven't figured, is it to leave one piece of shrubbery in a 10 by 10 block, which I think is reasonable. I mean, it just but says... But it sounds like if you're clear... I can't, I can't read the existing ordinance to figure it out, frankly. It sounds like what you, we were trying to clear. Well, but I guess what I'm saying, yeah, but exactly. I think it would be really reasonable if we wrote an ordinance that says you can leave a rhododendron or a, as long as you got one every 10 by 10 block, rhododendron, azalea, whatever, it's a reasonable ordinance. I don't think you need to mitigate if you've got a road of, you know, a 10 by 10 block is barely bigger than the table you're sitting at. One rhododendron, one azalea, or one mountain laurel in that spot is going to achieve all the goals you want to achieve. It looks good, it's habitat, it prevents erosion, but you know, when you got 15 in that block, and I've seen 10 or 15 in that block, that's unreasonable density of trees, of shrubbery in the ground. And we're restricting the removal of that. We are restricting the reasonable removal, thinning of shrubbery with this. That's why I think the ordinance is very overreaching in the area of shrubbery. Mm -hmm. It's far more liberal and reasonable when it comes to trees. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong. If there is an issue that somebody's having with the ordinance, like the shrub, um, can can we not bring it to the council and have the council vote on it? Yes, absolutely. I mean, so it's not. And that's that's part of the length of the ordinance is having the appeal process. Yeah, you can go to, you go to the council. And tell them what the situation is. Why don't we write a one page simple ordinance and just let everybody go to the council? Yeah. Yeah. Why, have, why have this massive thing? For the, for the same reason that Maureen said a minute ago, is the 
there's this perception of this in crowd, they can get things done, and then if you're not the in crowd, you can't. That's the way it works anyway. That's the way it works. Uh, well, yeah. I wouldn't yeah. have to say it's 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 I, don't, I don't think I'm First off, I don't, I can tell how many tree it. approval permit or tree permits were there issued this year? 72 is the end of September. Okay. That's 72 people that would be before the council. Does the council want to get done anytime in a reasonable fashion? Or, uh -huh. or should all 72 of those people be you know, taking everything up with the city council? I mean, the city council serves as the appeal process anyway. So if we don't approve your and permit if it goes request. The city council to... in the first place, what's the appeal process? Right. To the court. No, I'm just saying I have a very simple ordinance that you wouldn't have to go. I mean, if you talk about getting uh, you know, expensive, yeah. well, it's going to get expensive. It's going to get you, you, know, you, know, you keep telling me that if we take away the right to have a view, we're going to have a taking issue. And this absolutely makes it easier to, get, to make a view than you have currently. So, uh, you know, I don't buy the argument. That doesn't mean that your permit is going to get approved. That's the whole point of this, is to make it very clear for her what gets approved and what doesn't. That, 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 right now, it's very subjective. That, that, just, so, yeah, you got gotcha. you. And not all permits now get approved, as you well know. And it's not everybody gets a permit, as we all know. So, hence the reason for an appeal process. And then if that appeal doesn't go to your satisfaction, you can still go to court. But at least that's, there's that extra layer of view. All right, who's next? Let me just say, what you just said doesn't work. I wrote a letter to the judge. The judge never saw it. The city manager, who's not a lawyer, doesn't have a legal background, doesn't have the experience and training, she writes me the answer, which simply says, we always do things fairly here. That was the answer to a three-page. So you're telling me she received a letter you wrote to a judge? Yes. How is that even possible? Because the, if you want to get to the judge, you have to go through the city. So you didn't write a letter to the judge. You wrote I wrote a letter to the, to the judge, addressed to the judge. The city manager got it and answered. You wrote a letter addressed to our because building I don't, know the, I don't know who the judge is. The city picks the judge. Well, call the city, the county. City court. Find out. I mean, I mean, city court. It wasn't a court let's, action. Let's We're getting on. off topic. Any more folks? I mean, I'll just add one thing. Um, I was here Maureen's eyeballs like your report. Would you mind standing? Absolutely. Thank you. I've I know I've spoken, but I'd like to clarify something. I was here when we had the big fire that came up through Sky High Drive. A transformer broke down on Peak and Peak, Super Bowl Sunday. We had 40 mile an hour winds, and the fire went from down on Peak and Peak up to my house and my neighbor we got out with, my husband and I got out with garden hoses. Fortunately, we have some decent pressure. And we soaked our house and our neighbors. It went right up. We had five fire companies. The thing that supported the blaze was the mountain laurel. And after that, they got it under control. And thank you, God, nobody lost their houses. It went right up to the water tank in 10 minutes. Some of the early, some of the fire companies got there quickly, and they pulled their trucks down on my street. One of the fire trucks, it moved so quickly, it got singed. And they had a big hose, a pumper, and the man who was taking the hose off was taking, sort of taking his time. I got out there and said, let's get this done. Cut to the chase. That's my nurse personality. We hauled it up and hooked it up up at the where the Haller house. Now it's a different owner. There's a fire hydrant there. We hooked it up. Thank God the fire hydrant worked, and we soaked the area. 
Um, first, the point being, if you restrict <coughs> the removal of mountain laurel, we had a forest ranger come to the POA meeting and tell us to remove the mountain laurel from around our homes because it supports fire. And I think in writing your ordinance, you need to be aware of what you're telling people if you restrict the removal of the mountain laurel because I saw it support the fire and take it right up. FYI. I'll sit down now. All right. Anybody in favor of a new ordinance? <coughs> Connie. Don't want to lose my train of thought. <coughs> Connie Larson, Alex Mountain Drive. I have lived here for about 20 years, visiting a whole lot longer. And I'm going to start saying good morning. It's great to see so many of you here on this nice cold morning. Friends, now we can clear up some miscommunications that are being circulated. It seems that those who are opposed to the new ordinance want to create or maintain a view. I do. This ordinance will make it easier than the one that governs us right now. There's a section on thinning of thick stands of density trees. Density. Trees requested for removal under this section will not require mitigation and be approved without question. There is no requirement to get a permit for trimming your trees. <clears throat> the one that governs us right now, you have to have a permit to trim above 12 feet. Topping has been removed and replaced with drop crotch pruning. Same effect, and the arborists recommend this method. Forests are essential. We all know that. If you want to remove healthy trees that do not fall within the thinning guidelines, there's a 25% requirement for mitigation, which can, can include replanting smaller type trees and shrubs which would not impact your views since views seem to be the big issue it is with me too and in regard to a letter Sunday I shall assume that all of you referred <coughs> received this letter to which I am referring the sentence all of which who were in opposition to the new tree ordinance I was there. I was not opposed to the ordinance. So, that was unfair to include me and others in this room, carte blanche. Even the PNZ committee should be included as to how they feel. I don't think they were. They are homeowners and they want a view too. Friends and neighbors, the PNZ has been meeting on the tree ordinance for going on two years to make our lives easier than the old ordinance. For the record, I approve this ordinance. Thank you for your attention and have a blessed day, the one God made for all of us. Next. Ed Moore, the name, and uh, I agree with everything that Connie just uh, stated. In, in, in particular, I'm, I'm totally against these messages that go out to people that say everybody opposed when, when it's not true. And I was actually here, Ed. Everybody that stood up and had anything to say was opposed. Did they, did they, were they opposed? <clears throat> They're the committee. We're talking about the taxpayers well, was there. Here to answer to them. Your, your message was not true. She, she just was that. true. You were, if you were <coughs> here. She was here. Okay. I was here too. Can you get yeah. us the video? Yeah. All right. You make a point. Now, <clears throat> the the thing that concerns me is is some of the clear cutting that has gone on in the past uh, on this mountain, and it's been done legally. And I hope that this ordinance will take that that uh, that uh, option away. Uh, <clears throat> 
I can remember a year and a half ago, I'm over on this side of the mountain, and looking back, it's like this whole big section was, was clear. And we went down and we checked, and it was done legally. So I'm hopeful that this, this will prevent that from happening. Uh, some of the things like the difference in the topic being, being kind of different might, might help. Uh, <clears throat> I applaud the committee and all your efforts for the last two years. And gentlemen like this are giving positive feedback instead of just outright opposing something. If the existing ordinance was working so well, why would we have so many exceptions to things? Maureen, in your discussion, you talked about all, all the exceptions, but that's an enforcement problem. And my sense is, from what I'm hearing, is there's there's the current law is very hard to, to enforce because it is subjective. It gives too much decision process in there. Hopefully this one will take that away. That's Thank the goal. You. <clears throat> Thank you. Debbie, you're next. I'm Debbie uh, Dalhouse Curtis, and I also want to thank the committee commission for the work you <clears throat> put in. Um, I work for Clemson with foresters and agriculture scientists, and what you have written for the trees is what they recommend as far as how you manage trees. Um, I read the, the existing ordinance, and Maureen, that is exactly why there were unfair exceptions, because there is no specific. So, yes, it's a lot of words, it's a lot of definitions trying to make it clear so everybody understands what is appropriate and what is not. I agree with Don. Um, I actually went to his house, looked out from his view, saw your neighbor. Um, we have two things going on here. We are a tree city, USA and we are a fire-wise community. The two are not mutually exclusive, but we do have to balance them. It seems that maybe we need to look a little more closely at the shrubbery area um, because of the, the thick stands. But as far as the trees, there has been a lot of hysteria created incorrectly, saying you cannot do this on your property. Yes, you can. And you do not have to understand what drop crotch pruning is. As I look around this room, none of us should be climbing a tree with a chainsaw in our hands. You hire someone who knows what drop crotch pruning is. And it is precisely what three experts recommend. So please, let's dial back the hysteria and agree that we want an ordinance that can be enforced equally and fairly, and that there is no question about what is and what is not a tree. Um, there are a lot of definitions in here that adds to the length of the ordinance, but in any regulation, you have to have an agreement as to what terms mean. So I am in favor of the tree portion of the ordinance, I agree with Don. I would like to look a little more closely at the shrubbery part uh, because to be the, the firewise, as Maureen has mentioned, as Don has mentioned, you do need to be able to defend the shrubbery. And I might have missed something. So if I have, please please correct me. Debbie? May I speak, sir? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> that was real difficult. <laughs> um, first of all, my name is Deborah Janice McAfee, and I may be related to someone from the county. And I said, oh, PNC. Oh, PNC, I'm sorry. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't want to be. <laughs> first of all, let me say, I have personally witnessed for the past two years, the hours that my husband, said he was dying Helen and Miss Frank and when Ben. Ben? Yes, Ben. <laughs> uh, the hours that he been spent, including Will Gurley, in trying to take something old, Maureen, which your situation came under, and make it better. And I, I hate the divisiveness. Look at this. Over here, we have 
you. Look at her frown on her face. Look at Chip sitting there like this. These are all you looking people. Maureen's the only one that I feel is listening. And sir, your hands are here, they're not here. I mean, this you, you learn how to read people. And you know, listen to what we're trying to say. Have you all read the old ordinance? Compared it to the new? Thank you, Marie. Thank you. I mean, not everybody has done this. They, they just believe what's coming out in emails. Do your homework. Yes, sir. Are you for or opposed to it? Oh, I'm for. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was going to do that at the end. Yeah. I was going to do that. And I only say that this <coughs> work. And someone in some one of these emails said, why has it taken two years? Two years to get this to happen because they want to get it right. They want to make it better. And yes, there is this point about the shrubbery that my gentleman mentioned. And and I understand that. And, and we are hearing you. And I'm sure they hear you. But you know, after two years, send it to the council, let them make a vote on it. And that may not be the, it may not be perfect, okay? But we do have an appeals process. I mean we live in a community we bought in the community because our first house was all the trees. We loved it. Then we decided, well, maybe we wanted a second house here because of the people got along so well in this community. And and and, and that was the time, 2001. We've been here much longer, but we've been here since 2001. And we kept thinking, we love this community. We want to be more a part of it. And where we came from, we were both involved in our communities. So in the end, I support what they have done. Let it move forward, and if you have a particular situation, sir, you know, you go through the appeals process. And, you know, unfairness, that happens in all communities. But we want zoning. We want to have rules. Nobody's property rights have been in the And, you know, just remember that. It, it's, yes, you do have rights. And we do have a council that listens. And, Yes, I mean, I hear this about we have this click. There are clicks in every community. But try and bring everybody together and communicate. Let's all communicate that way. And let's try and do the right thing. Sorry, I'm so tired. Thank you. 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 I'm Neil Howard, and you know from the signs I'm running for council. What you may not know, and I know some of you have assumed, that I am against the county. The, uh, see? <laughs> against the, uh, but I stood up because I'm not against the ordinance. I've never been against the ordinance. I sat with Steve Mason, we went through it, you know, there's been a lot of good work done. I still think there may be some, need some things that need to be cleaned up a little bit. And I definitely, if you've read any of my, uh, my uh, <laughs> email that goes out, one of the things says that I think it can be shortened and made more user friendly. And I know it can be. I know it, the ordinance can be made, the part that affects you and what you want to do could be done in about two pages. All the whereases, all the definitions, they could be appendices. What you want to put up front is how to get the job done. And what do you have to do to get the job done? You go to the city, I would also change the word from code enforcer to something a little more friendly. You go there and you meet with the, uh, I'll call him uh, the <laughs> inspector, <laughs> and you work with him to see what you can do because it's been brought up here many times before that it's too much for people to even read or understand. They don't know this and it. You go to the people that understand. And the city's supposed to be here. We're all part of the city. You go to the city and see how they can help you to understand it and how you can get the job done. 
and if it comes down to one thing that you can't do, maybe you shouldn't be doing it, <laughs> number one. Or I've heard the this, this statement made in this room that you can do about anything you want. Just you have to do it in a certain way or you have to do it in a certain sequence. So, I've gone through it. I don't have anything against the ordinance as far as the trees. I didn't even understand the brush part, and I'm glad it was spoken to today. Uh, and that made me need a little clean. What I think it needs to be done with it is make it so that when somebody picks up that ordinance, they see where to go and what, how to start and how and who to ask if they don't understand or have questions. Work through the application, and I don't think we'll have arguments and that's and that's what I thought all along so don't make assumptions uh, I just recently got to the point I have no dog in this fight we don't have a view we don't care for a view but I am interested in those that do have a view and want to keep a view so I got interested and I got through it and I read it and with, through with Steve Mason and now and then I got to where I could understand it. And I thank the uh, PNC committee for all the work they've done. But let's uh, at least think about in the future. If it goes to council and it passes, fine. I still think there needs to be some work done and make it more <coughs> user friendly. That's my old, only point I wanted to make it so that people didn't misunderstand my position. Thank you. Thank there you. Go. <laughs> Who's next? <clears throat> um, would you consider making the point of entry for the property owner either the city manager or the city council so that people could file with whichever one they wanted to. I don't know if going straight to the city council is... I, so what was your question again? To give the property owner the option of filing with the city manager or with the city council, either one. Well, I mean, it doesn't... It goes to the billing inspector anyway first it doesn't come to me first he looks at it before i ever do yeah so my question is can the property owner have an option of it going to the city manager or work with the city council why why would you do that if you have them as the appeal the anyway council they're going to turn it over to the city inspector and manager anyhow I just need to clarify. Are you talking about the appeals process? Or are you no, just I'm talking, talking about, about the initial entry. The vast majority are just going to be approved. I mean, I've, I've probably had a dozen tree permits over the years. Absolutely. They, they get approved. If you if you follow the rules, they get approved. There's I don't see any reason to have to go to the city council unless you disagree with the city's appeals process. I don't know. Yeah. No, then take it I mean, to the council. You've got to. I'm glad to hear it then. Stack of paper, and we get to look through. Morning, you were on council. No, that stuff comes in. You have to look at all that stuff before you go to me. Now, pay is really great. <laughs> 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 is the city council then going to get emphasis on the inspector route, issue a permit, collecting the fees? City council isn't going to inspect your property. Yeah, that I can assure you. So I think it needs to go to the city first. <laughs> well, the inspectors can go out and do it, but then. Mm -hmm. After that point, all I'm saying is you, should, you can have the option to go either through the city manager or directly. Well, you have that option in the appeal process, but I, I think that's just uh, jumping uh, the gun. I mean, if your permit I've is... I've the appeal process. Well, you know, you're, all, whatever issues you might have had in the past had nothing to do with this ordinance. The that, whole point of this is to make it specific for them. It's not the ordinance, it's the people. 
It's the people. Have you requested a tree document? A tree is to tell them in no Ember. uncertain terms that these are the things that are approved. So there is no option. Have you requested a tree permit? No, and you know why. Why? Because you wouldn't approve it. How do you know? So you made that yeah. assumption. I, 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 my history. My history. So you illegally cut them. Yeah. And say that you would do it again. Yeah. Well, then why should we even have all yeah. Why even have a council? Have, have an opportunity to go somewhere where you can get a fair hand. I want to speak. Pretend like I am not on this situation right now. I'm a, a city, year-round city resident and a property owner and a taxpayer. And I have served on council. I've lived here twice, from 1970 until 1975, when there were no houses except the barn and two houses. And the lodge was under construction when I first came here in April of 1970. So, to me, having seen the development of Upper Heatherstone, Honey Bear, all of the Sky Valley development, trees have been cut through the years, and that is going to happen. But how wonderful it is when you come around Sky High Drive and you look up at Raven Mall, which fortunately is National Forest Service property, and it's not going to get cut. They don't need any permits. Uh, Don and I have lived here almost 12 years, and so I've seen a lot of changes at Sky Valley. I have not lived here as continuously as Maureen has, but I love Sky Valley, and I think that we have a wonderful community. Yesterday, we were driving, Don and I were driving back to Sky Valley from Columbus, Georgia, and south of Atlanta, south of the airport, I noticed the different types of drivers that there were. There are speeders, there are tailgaters, there are lane changers, there are people who ignore double yellow lines. Those rules on the highway have been made for people who follow the rules. And we have the same effort here to try to put together guidelines for the citizens, the entire citizenry, for our community's appearance and beauty. Um, there are going to be people who break the road laws, and there are going to be people, obviously, John, who break the, the rules that have been set. So if we didn't have any rules at all, then how would this place look? You would have people that de are determined to have their views. They're going to clear cut their property. They're going to take advantage of, of the opportunity that they can cut a tree that's 75 or 80 years old um, with no regard for how long it took that tree to get that old. Um, I just feel like we have worked diligently. We have listened. We have revised. We have had input from citizens that are not on the committee that have helped rewrite. and. It's not going to be a document that everyone is going to agree with, and hopefully they'll hopefully try to go by the guidelines because the guidelines are for everyone. This is a nonpartisan commission. We, it's for the duty of Sky Valley. It is not for Democratic or Republican. It's not for the click or the non-click. Um, it is for everybody, and it's. It hurts me to, to see the dissension, to see the rumors that are spread, and I think, Chip, I, I think you've gotten the message today that there are a lot of people who don't like your grouping things together in your emails. Um, I think you've done a lot of good with your emails, but I think you've done, done harm, too. And um, I just want us to be able to get together and do what's right for everybody, and and not have the finger pointing and not break the rules just because you don't think that um, city council is going to, or the city manager or the tree enforcer is going to do. Maybe what you wanted done shouldn't have been done, John. You know, rules are made. People don't, don't go on the highway and it's not safe for them to drive 100 miles an hour because it's not safe for you and me to have 
them running on the road. Well, maybe it's something that you wanted to do, and I have no idea what you have done. But maybe it, it shouldn't have been done. But then there are people that think that it's my property, I can do with it what I want to, and I'm going to do with it what I want to. So um, to try to get along with everybody, is, it takes a little bit of flexibility from people. Can I just say that my property was clear cut by the mayor of this city. When he built the house. When he built the house. Had nothing to do with the city that. manager was involved in that. And now here I am, years later, you know, trying to just top some trees. And uh, you know, it's it's been a point of contention since I moved well, in. And sounds, the house wasn't complete. It sounds like it was not a happy thing. And I'm sorry. No, it's not been a happy thing. And, and that's unfortunate. Um, but that shouldn't be, I mean, that's an individual situation that's unfortunate. And I have nothing to do with more than that. But, um, but there, there are more people here that need guidelines and want to follow the guidelines and do everything that they can to do what's best for everybody, not just for their rule. So. Let, me, let me ask you one question. Why not, this, this is a big issue, obviously, and I, and I see both sides of it, okay? Uh, why not go out and let all the property owners vote on this before it goes to the city council? Do a referendum. Do a referendum. Not, most of us here don't have a vote on anything in the city. And so give us a vote one time on one ordinance. And maybe there ought to be votes more votes on other issues. Well, I don't, I mean, I've got property in Columbus, Georgia. I vote up here now. I don't vote in Columbus. So everything that's done in Columbus, I don't have control over. This, um, and you have to choose. You're gonna I understand it. that. But on, on, on particular issues once in a while, this is not a vote like a vote for a person or anything like that. But why not just let, let the POA or somebody go out and have a vote of all the citizens for one time, let all the citizens vote on something. Well, that's a That's something y'all could recommend. That would be something that property owners might be able to do. But that's not something that, that this commission is designed to do at this point. I mean, it could never be done. But um, I'm willing to, I mean, I am a listener, and I am a private peacemaker. I just want everybody to be happy. And, and there are going to be some things that maybe not the way that I would want them done, but if it's the best for everybody, then it's what's best for the city. And so um, that's just how I feel, and that's the way I live my life, and that's how I own this particular commission. Um, if anybody wants my seat, you're welcome to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just out of curiosity, John, the problem that you have is under the existing ordinance, or lack of what would this ordinance? Would this ordinance give you the ability to do what you want to do? It, it, actually, it, it would make it better. It would make it better. There you go. But, but the thing is, again, I'm not looking at the statute. I'm not looking at the language of the law. I'm looking at how things are implemented around here. <coughs> okay? And that's my concern, is how things get out. And there's nothing you can do about it. I understand. Oh. Jim? <clears throat> my name is Jim Curtis. I live on uh, Edwards Drive. Um, my view is getting diminished, as everyone's does over time. Um, I've been planning to do something about it. Uh, I've studied the old ordinance. I've had some experience with it. Uh, it was actually a good experience. The city listened to what I had to had to say and. They, they approved it and it was all done uh, and I'm grateful for that but then again that's that's the way I expect for cities to be administered efficiently and, 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 and fairly and that's been my experience with this city uh, right now as I said I've got some work that needs to be done I've been postponing it for quite some time uh, frankly it's going to be a lot easier with this new ordinance than it was under the old one and I'm hoping that we will go ahead and approve this ordinance so I can, so I can go ahead and, and get on with things. 
I also want to thank the folks for teaching me some things that I didn't know about trimming and about the possibilities. And I think that what I'm going to do now has been informed by this discussion, and I'm going to be able to do some things that I've never even conceived of.